Hello, our world. Uh, welcome back to our world talk. Uh, obviously, we didn't get canceled. We are here, and I am so excited for episode number two. Uh, I have the distinct honor of welcoming a good friend of mine who happens to be the CEO of Broward Palm Beaches and St. Lucie Realtors, Miss Deanna Hall. Welcome. Thank you, Chris. Or should I call you maybe President Chrisman? It's uh, still so weird to hear that. I know. I think it's uh, so wonderful to have you in here. And I think it's so great that you get to launch this podcast. I mean, this is something that our members, or especially our leadership, has been asking us to do for a while. And um, we think it's just a really great way to um, have people be able to easily listen to us, get these small little updates, get to know us better. Um, and what better person? Uh, you told us, I think, a while ago that you used to do commercials, right? I did. I used to work in film back in Toronto, and uh, I have had a little bit of exposure in front of the camera, but most of my work was behind the scenes. Oh, was it? Okay. So there's yeah. no extra stress now on you to do a better job because you were like an actor in your nope. previous life. No, okay. just, just normal old me. Okay. Um, well, then I'm going to have to tell Anthony that we are choosing somebody else to lead our podcast. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> No, this no, is we mine. We are very excited. Yeah, I'm really, um, you know, a little salty that David was chosen before me. Um, I know he's president-elect, but, you know. I guess I, th I thought we'd be able to get a couple tips out of them for our first podcast. So, yeah, but we are happy, obviously, to have you here. Thank you. Um, so what's new in your world? What's uh, the day in the life of a rock star CEO looking oh, like these yeah. days? Um, you know, pretty busy, a little uh, exhausting at times, right? Well, we just had a really big announcement last week, actually, which was our massive data share between Bright MLS, which Exciting is, uh, news. yeah, um, which was a, which is the second largest MLS in the country with about 110 subscribers up the Mid Atlantic, 110,000, thank you, uh, subscribers up the Mid Atlantic coast. Yep. And um, then we also partnered with California Regional MLS, who has also a little over 110,000 subscribers, uh, which is the largest MLS in the country. So we call it our, our massive data share here in the United States. And so uh, we were able to tell everybody uh, what we, we had been working on for the past, you know, few months uh, last week. So that has really occupied our time doing a lot of different, um, you know, writing a lot of articles, being on a lot of different shows. So uh, that is the, the newest. Um, and then you said the day in the life of me. Well, let me say that um, I travel a good amount. You know, there is, we're leading an association and an MLS. So we have all these conferences on the association side, on the MLS side. We have our state conferences or national conferences. We have um, some really great strategic groups that we're a part of on the association and the MLS side. So, um, yeah, by the time everybody gets one or two of those conferences in, uh, that takes up a lot of time. We have a lot of board meetings. Um, obviously, our world uh, really believes in making sure that we are um, giving our members the opportunity to be in different leadership positions. And so that means that we have a lot of different opportunities, but that, uh, you know, takes us attending a lot of different meetings and preparing for them. And, um, you know, then we have almost 80 staff members, right? And, you know, we really feel that, um, you know, obviously this culture that we've uh, developed with our leaders is phenomenal, but we need to make sure obviously their staff feels the same way too. So, um, you know, we're always looking at for um, ways to make sure our staff feel like they're a part of um, this great leadership journey that we're all on together. Yeah, the staff at uh, Broward Palm Beach's St. Lucie Realtors is absolutely exceptional. They are. They are. Absolutely exceptional. You've put together a fabulous team and they, they really look out for us. And you guys don't see what's happening behind the scenes here, but we've got staffers in the room that are making us look this good right now. So um, many, many thanks to them. Um, let's dive into some discussion about uh, the MLS space. Okay. Uh, Beaches MLS has obviously several partnerships, a couple that you had just mentioned. Uh, we recently announced uh, the new partnership with some key MLS groups. You talked about uh, Bright MLS. You talked about California Regional. Those are incredible markets, by the way. I mean, the, the, the strategic uh, play there obviously is uh, exceptional. You have major, major cities in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic that uh, Bright is taking care of. Then you've got major cities in uh, basically all throughout California that are part right. of California yeah, Regional absolutely. MLS. We've got so many of those people that are now coming to South Florida for one reason or another uh, from both of those areas. So um, great move. Mm -hmm. um, but tell us a little bit more about yeah. uh, exactly why we have those partnerships going on and what that is going to do in order to help our members. Well, I think everybody here in South Florida knows that the Northeast has always been a huge amount of people coming down to our part. Um, of, of the country. Um, and, you know, that has been, you know, forever happening. Uh, but the 
the pandemic really kind of double timed that, right? We saw an explosion of people from the Northeast, so much so that we've now been dubbed um, South on Wall Street. Uh, we have right. a lot of companies coming, which means more jobs and more people. And um, so obviously, just like a lot of markets, um, South Florida uh, really exploded, uh, but much more than probably a lot of other places across the country. Uh, so, you know, Bright being the, the second largest MLS in the country really made a lot of sense for us. We got a really good bang for our buck as far as, um, you know, getting them to uh, data share with us. And then it ends up that California uh, lately has been an emerging market of migration right. and flux in. So I think um, the I think it's third on the list for um, people migrating to uh, South Florida. And that's something that we haven't seen for a long time. But I think because the taxes are so high in California, um, a lot of people and they, they've obviously had a lot of different climate issues, which we have our hurricanes. But, you know, it seems like California really has had, you know, multiple issues, you know, whether it's you know between the um, the fires and the earthquakes and what have you. So. We're seeing it, people just kind of really being fed up with a lot of those different things, and they still want to be on the water. They still want somewhere sunny, so they've chosen Florida as their homes. And so that really made sense for us to, you know, start that partnership with these two huge MLSs. Um, they are both really revolu uh, revolutionizing the whole entire MLS space. So us being able to collaborate with them is really exciting, um, which is one of the reasons why we were first to the table to be a part of one of their newest ventures, which is called RE Distribute. Um, which is the this, the other uh, really big project we've been working on uh, before this data share. So t how did you uh, how did you get involved with Bright MLS and California Regional? How did you get connected with them? Yeah, well, Beaches MLS. Ever since uh, the creation of Beaches MLS, um, we really have been doing some amazing uh, projects and partnerships with people. And I think we've uh, the Beaches MLS name has been recognized by our industry peers as a group that. Um, is is willing to try, you know, new projects and activities to better their brokers and, and their agents. Um, but also we really follow through on our promises. We're really great partners with our vendors. We make sure that when we onboard a program, we just don't, um, you know, take it in house and, and tell the members, you know, hey, you know, once or twice, this is what it's about. You know, if you like it, you know, take it. If you don't, then don't. Uh, we really make sure that our staff trains on the programs and then our staff goes out into the offices and trains those agents to make sure that there's really good penetration on those projects. And we put a lot of time and energy into it. And so as we started building our reputation up as a very solid MLS in the industry space, uh, we were also invited to be a part of a lot of um, smaller MLS think tank groups. Um, and so Bright and California being, you know, one and two largest MLSs were key MLSs to be in these strategic partnerships or think tank groups, uh, which we were able to be invited to as well. And I think that began the conversations about hey, what can we do? Uh, South Florida, again, is such a hot marketplace. Um, they knew that we were a solid MLS that uh, really would be great partners to work with. And that actually has led to some of our other partnerships um, as well, not just the ones with Bright and California Regional MLS. Awesome. I love that uh, staff gets trained on those uh, products as well and make sure that if a member ever needed to, uh, to make a phone call, we've got people that are on the front lines making sure that they get their questions answered. It's um, certainly uh, something that I've always been proud of as far as the association and how it's run. You guys just do an absolutely fantastic job. Um, talking about the uh, data share agreements that we have with them, um, we talked about uh, how the agents can benefit. How, can it, how does that directly impact sellers in our South Florida marketplace? Well, right now we have increasing inventory on the marketplace, right? I mean, it's no secret that um, obviously interest rates have increased. Um, and people are not buying as quickly as they did before. So this gives a lot more eyeballs, obviously, on those sure. listings, um, opportunities for, you know, people to obviously sell these homes. Fantastic. Um, where do you see the MLS in the next five years? Where do you see us going? Is there any insight on what might be on the horizon as far as the MLS is concerned? And for anybody who doesn't know, when we're talking about the MLS, we're talking about the multiple listing service, which is giving us the freshest data that we could possibly need in order to operate our businesses as realtors. Yeah. Well, our focus is always on our brokers and our agents and making sure that you guys remain profitable and the center of the transaction, uh, making sure that the consumer is always looking to you to be the professional. And so that is what we're going to continue to do. We are just starting these really big initiatives. And so um, as we get further out, um, I think that we are going to see that our brokers and our agents are going to find even more value than we could have ever have believed when we first launched them. Uh, we are going to be returning our first profits to our brokers from RE Distribute, which is a data company, as I said, that was started by 
Bright in California, and we've come on to partner with them. It's exciting and stuff. It is exciting. Yeah. Um, I, I can't wait till we're, we're to that point where we are able to really kind of give our brokers that return for the data, uh, something that I believe that they've never seen before. Um, and then we are really looking to uh, dive deep into data analytics because we know that that's really what our brokers are interested in, um, is making sure that they can really slice and dice these metrics. We have so much data that we are sitting on. Um, we know that data is really the currency of the marketplace these days, and we want to make sure that um, we access it and we package it in a meaningful way for everyone to use. Awesome. Well, we always know that you are certainly committed to raising the bar. Um, what Are there any other MLS initiatives that uh, we can hope to see in 2023 going forward? Yeah, well, we have joined a group um, a little over a year ago called uh, MLS Aligned, and that was about five um, MLSs who were very technology focused. And obviously, all MLSs really you have a te- have a focus on technology, but these um, MLSs actually had a lot of in-house programmers and the ability to kind of build their own products and services. And so that was something that really drew us to this group because we wanted to be a part of a group that was able to look at pain points in the industry and build solutions, technology solutions to help kind of meet those needs. And so there's pain um, points in the industry. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure uh, you know better than me most days uh, being a broker yourself. But um, obviously that's why we have this great partnership between the professional staff and our leaders. So you guys can tell us, you know, what you're facing every single day. And one of the things that we heard was that um, there were not much, there was not much competition in the showing service product category. So there is really, there was one company that dominated the showing service space that, you know, most brokers and agents use every single day. Right. Um, and they, we, we heard this conversation about, you know, agents wanting more choice as far as what showing service that they were able to use. And so this group of MLS aligned, um, they were hearing this, the same issues coming up in their marketplaces. They decided to buy their own showing service product. And um, they have built on top of it to create what is now uh, Align Showings. That's and exciting. So, yeah. So Align Showings is a, a no, another showing service platform. But what we really like about it is that because we are MLSs, we've been able to really kind of sit down with our brokers and agents and kind of refine those issues that they're having most um, when they're using these products and services. So we've already had two of the MLSs um, from MLS Align's partnership roll out the showing service. and. Um, we hope to have many more in the near future. So yeah, lots of partnerships that we're a part of. And again, just really trying to you know solve those, those pain points in the industry um, wherever we can. Awesome. Fantastic news. Um, sticking with uh, the MLS conversation. So obviously you've uh, you already told us in uh, your opener about how much you travel and what the day in your life looks like. Um, so obviously uh, you get to travel, you get to go to some great conferences. Um, so there may be some agents that are listening that want to learn more about the MLS. So what would be a great conference to attend for somebody like that? And, and why do you think that? Well, a lot of these conferences are invitation only, um, just to make sure that the conversations are progressing, um, you know, in, in the way that, you know, people are going to feel like uh, we're moving the conversation forward. So um, all of our members can go to our state or national meetings. Um, each one of them is, is two a year. But uh, a group that we've recently been be, um, become involved with is Riz Media. Yep. Um, so Riz Media is a new benefit that we rolled out um, in December to our members, and so really they have a lot of um, uh, they have a really great uh, you know sounding board of other key brokers in the marketplace who are giving um, basically you know tips and tools of the trade of, of how other you know agents and brokers can be successful, how they are successful, and and learning from them. They also have a really big conference that comes up in the middle of the year. So I think there is full of really good speakers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just the people who are really doing business in the industry. So, um, I think the Riz media, um, conference is a really great one for them to uh, go to. There's always Inman, uh, which is, you know, very agent driven as well. Right. So they're having their conference, uh, coming up at the end of the year in Las Vegas. And they just got done with their, uh, one in the winter in New York, a little too cold for me, but, uh, you know, we'll be there if we need to. Fantastic. (laughs) Yeah, you know, uh, when it comes to um, Florida Realtors or uh, the National Association, you know, all of those um, uh, MLS meetings, the majority of the MLS meetings that are held at those uh, conferences or conventions, they're open to all of the members that are there. You don't have to be sitting on the MLS committee in order to attend one of those meetings. So if there's ever anything 
uh, that you have interest in that you want to learn more about, or maybe it's a committee that you're thinking about joining, I would definitely say sit in on one of those meetings, whether it be Florida Realtors or NAR. And uh, that's a great way to find if the content is something that is relative to you, if it's something that you're interested in. And obviously, uh, you could find out if, if that's something that you want to pursue. And if you do, then certainly being in the room when they're having the meeting, I always like to write my name down on the sign-in sheet, even though I'm not part of the committee, to let them know that I was there Absolutely. and that I have interest. Yes, so. yes. That is actually a really great idea. Yeah. And, you know, these NAR conventions aren't just about committees, right? They have a ton of education. They have Absolutely. a huge expo uh, floor. So if people haven't been uh, to an NAR convention, uh, really, it's, it's a great way to um, kind of dip your, your toe into a lot of different arenas. Um, I think, you know, some of the, the different uh, topics that they've had have just really been something worth the um, trip to, to go see. I agree. Wholehearted. Yeah. Um, so inspiration is an excellent part of uh. sustaining success. So who do you follow? Who do you pull from? Um, where's your inspiration coming from these days? So uh, we're always reading, right? I mean, there's just obviously, you know, you guys know my, my other half, I say is Kim Hansen, our chief operating officer. And uh, so uh, her and I are always sending each other just tons of information. She's very inspiring to me. Um, our leaders, I think to, um, you know, I have to say, you guys always have such really great nuggets. Um, even David Searle, who we always joke around about, um, you know, we, as you know, Chris are getting ready to launch our third commercial for our consumer campaign. And, uh, we were reviewing the scripts, as you know, at one of our conferences just a couple weeks ago, yep. and David had some really good feedback on, on nuggets of, you know, what the perspective of, of the commercial and such. So, um, I think you guys always, you know, show me a different perspective of how to, you know, problem solve, you know, different, you know, issues or, or things that we're doing. Um, I would say that one of the outside newsletters and magazines that I've been reading, which I find a lot of good stuff in is, um, Inc magazine. Okay. Um, and that is when I just started reading, but a lot of really great stuff about like the, the really the startup founders and things like that, that right. I find, um, inspiring. So things that are kind of cutting edge in Inc magazine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love yeah. it. Awesome. So. It's, it's funny that, uh, you pointed out to. David, David's given you some good nuggets and you're pulling inspiration from him because um, we just had a podcast with David on it and we were talking about David being a goofball and here you're drawing yeah, inspiration Yeah, I know. From him. And I think that's he's why I brought him up it. because he's like a resident goofball. It's <laughs> yeah. like, geez, if I can get a nugget out of David, I mean, you know. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, yeah. Um, so t- last question for you. Uh, I had just uh, asked David this one as well. As far And d- d- you may have just touched on a little bit of it, but as far as... Um, your favorite podcast or a favorite book or a quote that you draw inspiration from or something that's changed your life? Oh, geez. Well, um, nothing's coming to mind, but the R World podcast, I think, is my new favorite there podcast, <laughs> right? Uh, I'm excited that we have finally launched our video library, which is such a cool experience. That um, is really cool. Yeah, the first our, time I saw it, I was blown away. If our members have not checked that out, I mean, you guys, it looks like you are you know, just, you know, surfing Netflix or something exactly. like that. So, um, I think it's going to be really cool to kind of like sit on my couch and kind of surf our, our videos and check things out. Right. Um, maybe that makes me a really big nerd, but you know, that's all good. No, um, you know what? I, I as well pull uh, inspiration from our up and coming leaders when I see them do one of these videos and now they're all going to be in the video library, but some of the people that are volunteering for this association are just they're excellent on camera. They do a really good job. And uh, you talk to them afterwards and they, everybody comes from different walk of life, different background. And some of them are super, super inspiring. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, you know, I think one, there, there's a mindset that I have that is kind of more of my daily inspiration. And, um, and it's really this marathon mindset. Um, you know, there are these like tough pushes that you go through and you don't think you're going to make it. Um, and, and, and you, you know, pull through them. And then there's these times where, you know, you've got to kind of loosen the pace. But the point is, is that it's a, it's a long journey. You know, I mean, you don't just, you know, finish one project and you're done. You know, there are, right. are many along on the journey. And so um, I think it's always just kind of good to kind of keep that perspective is that, you know, we, you know, sometimes you're kind of pushing hard up the hill. Obviously, I do work out. So maybe that <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big Orange Theory uh, enthusiast. So, um, you know, we do uh, you got your base push and um, all outs and I kind of you know, think about that every single day when we have these big projects, and we're trying to get through them, um, or, you know, whatever we have. So I think just kind of maintaining the fact that this is a, a lifelong journey that we're all on together, um, kind of keeps me positive and, 
you know, trucking. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I know you're busy and probably have to get back to running this fantastic association. So with that, uh, goodbye, everybody. Thank you for joining us on our second episode of Our World Talk, and we will see you next week. Bye.